the the model for our business right now is really around we that sleep at night factor we love to be able to provide to people right so we've got that capital city strategy for the most part yep. which yep. we all kind of live and breathe by you know yep. we're not one year strategy people um we're seven oh, 10 flipping. 15 20 yep. year you know none of that yep. stuff so it's about buying good quality properties good quality markets we know we're getting the right pressures and- you're listening to property investor tales stories from the front yard here's your host tabitha bright Hello and welcome to Property Investor Tales Stories from the Front Yard, where I get to speak to property investors from around Australia about their investing journey. My name's Tabitha Bright and I'm the Head of Coaching here at Positive Real Estate, where we help people build wealth through property. With over 8,000 clients across Australia and New Zealand, there are some incredible stories to tell, which hopefully make your investing journey that little bit easier and will inspire you along the way. So my guest today is Brennan Latimer. And Brennan talks about how he learned the power of starting early, about investing versus buying your own home, which is a question a lot of clients asked us. What's best? What's the best way to go forward? Do you trade investing for buying the home of your dreams or being able to get into the housing market for your first house? Uh, And we also talk through trading quality in major capital cities for cash flow in regional markets uh, and uh, and what those trade-offs are. So enjoy this conversation with with Brennan. Hey, everybody. Uh, Welcome to today's podcast. Uh, I'm super lucky to have the fabulous Brennan Latimer with me today. And um, Brendan works across two of our businesses here at Positive Real Estate, um, R&W uh, Group and Positive Real Estate. Uh, and he's involved in both development and acquisitions. So our acquisitions team are the team that go out and locate great deals for our clients. So we're going to talk a little bit about that today. But before I hand Brendan the mic, uh, I also wanted to touch on Brennan's background because um, tell us a little bit about your background, Breno. You've got um, qualifications in property. Yeah. That. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh God. I, I think I'm, I'm coming up to my 13th or 14th year with uh, the positive group as wow. a collective. Um, yeah. So it's uh, it amazes me every time I say that, basically. But yeah. Um, <laughs> For me, um, look, I've always been about real estate and, and really liked real estate. Um, mm. I'm a very linear thinking kind of person, uh, quite black and white, factual, and, and real estate's tangible. I, I like that compared to, you know, playing the other game of equities and all that sort of stuff and investing. Yeah. Um, so I've always been about real estate. So look, I, I went and uh, I studied a Bachelor of Property Economics at UTS, the uh, oh, yeah. University of Technology in Sydney. Yep. Um, which is kind of like an economics degree majoring in property, so to speak. Yep. Um, right. And then actually in my final year is when I started working directly under Sam Saggers, um, doing buyer's agency deals um, oh. in all sorts of parts of, of the country. Yeah. So that was my first foray into real estate, basically working um, under Sam. And everyone will know listening, you know, really, really um, amazing guy, a very prominent figure in the market, a unique take on everything, great person to work for. So here I am some 13, 14 years later, still still part of the team and yeah, loving it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. fantastic. Oh, awesome to, you know, hear that you've got those qualifications behind you as well, because it gives you that good foundation, which is, which yeah, is fantastic. And, yeah. and beyond that, you know, that you saw sort of fall into getting a certificate of registration, then getting your full license on class one license of as a director of a couple of businesses of our sales businesses. And yeah. Oh, look, in between that, positive real estate's pretty good. We've gone and got cert fours for business management, cert fours in finance, uh, gone and got various legal qualifications. So we know what we're talking about with contracts and, and things like that as well. So oh, yeah, quite fantastic. a quite a few qualifications. And that that's really good actually the positive team really encourage that so like you speak to most people and they've got a, a really good array of qualifications actually behind them which is yeah pretty cool yeah okay. no that that's awesome um because a lot of people when it comes to property investing are self-taught um and there's a certainly an aspect of that <laughs> for myself um and you know we talk about learning by trial and error and mm-hmm. um and 
actually getting coaching and mentoring. Once again, I've yeah. done both. I certainly learned by some trial and error in the early yeah, days. Yeah, me too, and, me too. Yeah. <laughs> so tell us about that. Tell we'll, us about we'll your touch, We'll touch work. on that later. <laughs> oh, look, I guess... I guess it stems from my first property deal, which was a pretty interesting one. Um, yes. You know, the the model for our business right now is really around we that sleep at night factor we love to be able to provide to people, right? So we've got that capital city strategy for the most part, yep. which yep. we all kind of live and breathe by, you know. Yep. We're not one-year strategy people. Um, we're 7, no 10, flipping. 15, 20 no. year, you know, none of that yep. stuff. So it's about buying good quality properties, good quality markets. We know we're getting the right pressures. And look, hey, my first property, I was uh, off in Gunnada in uh, <laughs> regional regional New South Wales. Yeah. Um, now, the market, not so bad. We've, we've done some deals with, with clients in there. There's been some growth, not as much as we'd hoped. Really good cash flow to it as well. But look, I... Um, I kind of had blinkers on, you know, you sometimes people fall in love with a deal and all I can see is the potential positives in it, right? And I, golden rule, just neglected some really basic due diligence. So you're familiar with black soil or like, you know, soil types. So the black soil is probably the most volatile movement orientated soil ah, that there is. Oh, you just told now, me something. <laughs> yeah. So where I, where I bought, so Gunnada is a pretty, you know, fruitful farming uh, agricultural region and, the reason I bought there was quite a speculative play. Shenhua is a large mining, Chinese mining group had found some of the richest coal deposits in the Gunada Basin there. And, ah. you know, it went from government green light to red light to green light to red light in terms of lobbying and, and everything. So it never actually really properly kicked off the ground. Um, so the merits of my, you know, speculative play didn't come to fruition. But, yeah. but I got a little bit of growth after about seven years, basically after I paid my... Um, uh, tax with relation to depreciation, I claimed there was pretty much you know a couple of bucks. Yep. The cash flow was really good on it, which allowed me to have basically a second income because I had some good savings set in the offset account. Oh yeah, great. But during the course, so I've got less hair in my head because of this property. <laughs> Why? Doors would be swinging, cracking all over the place, pipes cracking, plumbing oh. stopping. Um, multiple times battling the builder to get them to, to come out and do some more ag work around the house to alleviate a bit of moisture and movement. Um, and I remember, you know, the builder had brought it up at the beginning and, you know, all I could see was, hey, well, so what it was, 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 was a thousand square meters, 2000 square meters. I split two blocks, built two houses, still stride a title, but two fully freestanding big houses. And I had in this figure, it was like, geez, there's a 20% growth on that with a six and a half percent return and, and I just ignored everything in between. Gotcha. So that, you know, they were like, you know, this soil's pretty active. Hey, eh? I was like, you know, well, well, let's let's do peering. So we did peering. Uh, but of course it just wasn't enough. So yeah, bit of a headache asset and it was really hard to sell because of that reason. That that yeah. street was pretty well known for having that active soil and um, oh, and you know, it was, it was a pretty tough sell. So that was a really, really good lesson to learn for such a basic fundamental. Two reasons. Listen mm -hmm. to what people are telling you. Make sure you do your do, due do diligence right down to the nitty gritty. Yeah. And secondly, you know, the opportunity cost on that real estate for me, if I'd conversely gone and put that, that was a $750,000, $800,000 total deal 10 years ago into the Sydney, Brisbane, Melbourne market and just on a, just on a house. You yeah, know, we're talking about at this point in time, 10, 12 years later, anywhere from doubling to two and a half times. So, you know, that's why I think what we're doing now as a group and looking at capital cities, but which capital cities and why, and then diving yeah. into which locations within those cities and, you know, always pushing people to have a diversity of property types in different locations is, is yeah, super important. So I can always definitely tell people, you know, um, not everybody who does property is an absolute superstar winner. They've got some horrible <laughs> stories behind them. Yeah. You know, the next property I did absolutely killed it in Newcastle doing a duplex. Yeah. So following a similar sort of strategy, um, that's kind of nearly doubled in value and now spitting off about a seven, eight percent return for me over the last yeah. eight years. So yeah, yeah, you know, your lessons, uh, your lessons <laughs> are learned. I definitely asked the builder what the soil type was when I did that next. Duplex. You did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, it's funny. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's interesting because I think I think you're right. I think everybody that's invested in property, if they have started off off their own volition, um, 
they have a few bumps and scrapes to tell. Mm -hmm. I have a similar story and I'm adding it here because it's important to understand trade-off and it's important to understand what Brennan was saying about falling in love with the deal because I see so many clients that fall in love with the positive aspects of something mm -hmm. without understanding or allowing or waiting the trade-off. So whenever we're coaching here at Positive Real Estate, we talk about upside and trade-off because no deal comes with only upside. There is always yeah. trade-off. And then it's just a matter of understanding how you mitigate that risk and are you comfortable with that risk because the trade-off is enough that you yeah. proceed. And I yeah. remember we had a similar story, Brennan. We did we did a number of deals. We did a couple in New Zealand that had crazy yields, like 15% yields and stuff. And I got <laughs> wow. so caught up on that. I'd read Robert Kiyosaki in the 90s. Yeah, I've got to um, retire off cash flow. Yeah, not yeah, to do cash anything. flow. Yeah. Who cares about yeah. the capital growth? It's all about the yeah. cash flow. And I realized I was going to have to have something like 200 properties to retire myself yeah, on the income yeah. that I was after. And then, and, and then are you a slumlord and what kind of maintenance is there? And, yeah. uh, I, I rented to the student population in Dunedin and this isn't to by any means malign the Dunedin um, the <laughs> town of Dunedin. It's a beautiful city but it's well known for its partying hard student population. They take right. over the streets at, at, you know, like it's like spring break on steroids in New Zealand. So yeah, okay. it goes nuts and they are renowned for ripping up floorboards and lighting Oof. fires to keep warm in winter. <laughs> you know, it's it's okay. nuts. So we had properties there. How's and the landlord have... insurance on that? That would be fun. <laughs> well, it was, it, yeah, oh, I've got so many stories about those properties, but it was the same thing, Breno. We poured yeah. a whole heap of our cash. We had a business back then. We had a graphic design business. We were getting dividends. It was like, we're going to buy property with the dividends. We were throwing it into property, chasing yeah. cash flow. And if we'd bought the house bloody across the road, I'd have a couple of million bucks in my pocket right now. Yeah, yeah. Compared to when we sold them seven, eight years later and yeah, we met it totally. probably. So, sometimes it really is that kiss method, right? Keep it simple, stupid. Like, honestly, some of the people I know that have done the best in real estate are not even real estate-minded people. It's not their true passion or, you know, work. They they just had this mentality of like, uh, you know, I'll buy real estate when I can. I bought a house, no fuss, no, no analysis paralysis. And, and they've just crushed it. You know, yep. they bought a house in Sydney or Melbourne or Brisbane where they lived or what they knew when they could 10 years ago and, and just got on with it. Yeah, yeah, just good really quality. Stuff. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So funny that. You, yeah, you bang on. And and um, I often say to people when we're coaching them, you know, it's um, it, that is an awesome point, Breno, because people always look for the secret source or the, the information that yeah. nobody else has or, and while there can be a little element in that, um, of yeah. that, it, it is buying good quality real estate and holding and people get yeah. so bored with property. Sam talks about it all the time. Right. And so have you bought and sold a lot or you've, or you've held, what are your biggest kind of lessons yeah, and regrets and wins <laughs> outside of Newcastle? Um, yeah. Oh, look, so the, obviously I, I could have done better in terms of location and that original sort of 750, 800 um, investment I made. I was like 20, three at the time when I made that, I think quite young, 24, maybe yep. um, I'd made a bit of money in the share market. That's where I got some luck oh. to have this money behind me and awesome. shares wasn't for me. So I actually sold down like 90% of that holding to do real estate. You know, I was all about it at that point in time, working yep. in the, the positive, the positive crew, getting yep. mentored from, from various people. And um, look, so that one was a bit of a mistake. The next one for me was Newcastle, which is still a market that we do some work in. I'm, I'm a big fan of, of that marketplace like yeah. the assets i've got two three bedroom townhouses still there now um awesome so i i look you know i've really basically never had a day's vacancy the rent's always yeah. gone up and That's even funny. in periods in the last decade where we've had yeah. some you know minute peaks and troughs in our greater market of you know like yeah. election time and after time you know five years ago and stuff like that they really just you know plateaued for a brief splint period of time and mm -hmm. then and then carried on doing it so um 
I, I, I'm holding on those. For me, my strategy was I had the, the gun of our properties that were paying cash flow, did a yep. better piece of real estate with the Newcastle, which was going right. really well. Perfect. Then I actually just recently, a couple of years ago, purchased a home in Sydney. Um, yep. So I got married. I've got, uh, got two kids now. So it was, you know, setting up for that nesting kind of yeah, um, phase. Of course. So I needed to sell the gun at our properties in the lead up to doing that, basically. So kind of, you know, Jason talks about this, you're, you're migrating your money. Um, yeah. Essentially, that asset did help me to do it at the end, of the end of the day, but it had kind of reached its ceiling of usefulness to me and, and for what I needed in my life. But yeah. look, the aim for me, you know, house, house here in Sydney, pay it down as I can. Um, I utilize the equity out of my Newcastle properties to purchase my home here in Sydney. So oh, yeah, win, win, awesome. win. Yep. You know, they've still got great depreciation on them um, today and they're always increasing in rent. So they are positively cash flowed to help pay a little bit of my mortgage off. Yep. Um, and I'll, I intend to hold on to those forever. So yep. I've got a strategy to pay off my home in the next 10 to 15, then spend another 10 to pay off those assets. Yep. That's pretty much retirement time and, you know, 100K passive income up to two properties in Newcastle along with a super should should put me in a position to be able to actually consider like a semi-retirement That's at that awesome. kind of age. So, yeah, mapped out a little bit of a road work, you know, which is what <laughs> you guys encourage with all the clients, like have yeah. some sort of steps steps to do it, hold yourself accountable. Um, yep. Yeah, definitely, definitely doing the exact same kind of thing. And for me, more property, like I've still got a share portfolio, Oh, it's like fifty to sixty thousand dollars on any good or bad day, but I don't yep. even look at it. It's no point in looking <laughs> yeah. at it. It's it's just sitting there. And um, my next property, I, I still want to do some more real estate, even when I can. I've got to improve my serviceability a little bit. Yeah. Um, and then I'd and then I'd love to go. I, yeah, yeah. I, I still really love the idea of you know doing like a, maybe a house up in either uh, some part of the southeast Queensland market mm-hmm. or like a really selective. Um, purchase down in, in Melbourne as well, just for continued long term, forever, forever hold yeah. as well. So, yeah, kind I'll of definitely uh, buy in Melbourne. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. We'll practice what we preach, right? So it's you know same same merits for me, just buying yeah. some good stuff to hold on to forever. Yeah, that's yeah, it. and it, it's an important part of any client strategy. Um, even if you, I mean, a lot of clients choose to rent vest, so they'll rent and then mm-hmm. invest, um, and that can be due to their personal circumstances and the yeah. cost of getting a family home. Like Breno, you'd obviously built up some assets which allowed you to buy yeah. a beautiful home in Sydney in a premium area, um, and you know, and the price points of property like that is not to be sneezed at and you know you've taken you've taken a big step to providing financial security for yourself and your family with that and um, because it's so easy to get um you know uh, uh, bought out of the market yeah and i always yeah. think you know we've got a um really lovely home we're super lucky in a in a beautiful blue chip spot in um in melbourne but it's a single fronted, it's three bedroom, two bathroom, single fronted brick Edwardian property. And yeah, we looked at, um, you know, at various stages, because I'm in my 50s and at various stages along the along the journey, we looked at should, should um, we trading sell up. Or... Yeah, but yeah, we, okay. we, bought, we chose to buy more investment property. And yeah, now I sort of go, well, I don't, like if I was to buy a double fronted, um, house in this area on a decent block of land like I'm looking there's one going around um, for sale on at the moment that's four and a half million that they want for that yeah, and wow. so I just think but if I had invested in that uh, let's say 15 years ago I've had this place 20 odd years I bought it for mm. around was just over four, uh, just under four hundred thousand. I bought this. Oh, awesome! Uh, I know. <laughs> um, and um, that's the t- and- that's the time in the market right there. <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah, but I could have bought a double fronted for seven. And yeah. I thought, oh yeah. no, nah, I'll go the four. You know, call it four hundred. I'll go the four hundred, and I'll buy a whole lot of investment property. Yeah. And I just think, oh man, I pr- I probably should have, and I try not to think yeah. about it, but I probably should have bought the big double fronted. So congratulations on your purchase. <laughs> Yeah. Um, because, oh look yeah but okay I, I guess as well it's you know, there's always a shoulda coulda woulda we could sit down and play all day right um, always always but, but at the end of the day you would have diversified and still had some wins from the other assets that you that you oh, did buy instead of the big wins. one but 
Yeah. But hey, look, I can tell you this. I've got 700 squares. Um, I've got a four bedroom home on there and yep. I already cannot wait to downsize. I don't know when that's <laughs> going to be, but like every weekend, the maintenance, the upkeep, the creeps, yeah. the cracks, the things that go wrong. So like yeah. I, I can totally understand this movement over the next 20 years of people. Like I work 50 plus <laughs> hours a week. I've got two kids. The weekends are smashed with just activities and stuff. Like people, the, like the, the shrink is definitely going to be on because <laughs> you won't see people buying big houses in, in another five to 10 years unless they can pay for the cleanup frequently and pay for the garden maintenance frequently. And people's cash flows are getting squeezed at the moment. So yeah, it's interesting. You know, you'd, I think you probably would have been living in your big house now, but thinking, <laughs> shit, I wish I had a smaller place that's so much easier maintenance. It's probably. So the grass and, is always greener. Oh, look, I tell you what, you know, when you're getting old, because there's many of you guys know if you watch these podcasts, I love my running, but I am getting, you know, some running injuries and now right. that I've got to go up the stairs to the bedroom <laughs> oh. tell you what in the next 10 years that's not going to be so attractive um yeah, the boy. only thing I'd say is if you're looking long term one the level yeah. it says. <laughs> oh no 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 I hope I hope I never have to do that but anyway we we joke um yeah look whatever you choose to do, whether you choose to rent vest, whether you choose to do what I've done and spread your um, diversification, whether you're a little bit more um, focused with where you put your money, like what Brennan's chosen to do, you know, there's so many ways to make money out of real estate. Yeah, and I think 100%. what I love about real estate is that it, it gives you that feeling of control that maybe you don't get with the share market. You know, you can do yeah, it, correct. Reno, you can, um, you can, you know, physically put your rents up you can do yeah, yeah. You, you just have a little bit more control than just being a shareholder and um i yeah, really correct. like that about real sl estate. slower moving rates of decline and all growth yep. you know <laughs> um but sometimes <laughs> yeah ultimately it's that and look you know we talk about buying houses and things like that and it, I, I must say just taking a bit of a tangent mm -hmm. what's what's interesting to watch at the moment is you know we've got such an outcry of um you know, anywhere from 20 to 35 year olds, 40 year olds, sort of obviously pretty upset about the concept of buying houses in the market. Now that, that, you know, dream of the Australian dream is, is really tough, you know, not really achievable for the masses brings about a very interesting conversation for the future of real estate in Australia shrinking and, you know, people renting forever being much more common than it is now. Yep. But what is interesting is I always I have to say to people that like even some of my mates who haven't bought a home yet, I'm 35 years old, they might even be doing exceptionally well at work, haven't bought real estate, don't necessarily have any decent assets to them. There's this trend at the moment, which is so frustrating of like, oh, I can't buy the home, right? Piss, uh, piss it up against the wall. Uh, and it's so stupid. And it's happening everywhere. Like, and, and not to sound like an old man, but like, there are so many of these like up to 35 year olds that are going out multiple times a week, spending up big, partying, you know, getting on those recreational drugs, which aren't cheap, mm. um, trips here, there and everywhere. And it's, uh, and the gambling and stuff like that. It's, yeah. there's some pretty interesting things popping around on Instagram about how dumb it is and stuff like that with some tradies doing some stuff. It's funny. But, um, you know, it's so silly because you can go and buy something that can at least do some good by you. Like we're working on a deal in Canberra. You can get into a deal there with $25,000. Now you settle it in two years time. It's going to be paying you an income to hold it. Typically these ones we've got. Um, and you can service that on a, you know, an $80,000 a year salary, which is most people out there, you know, mm. it's like, namely here in, in Sydney. So you can at least do something rather than give up and sit there and, and then whinge and be a forever renter. Now, mm. of course, it is totally circumstantial and you know, not everyone is yeah. able to do it. And still it's tough to save 30 grand, 50 grand, what you need yeah. for the purchase. But yeah, it's, it's just, it's, it's interesting. Cause like there should be a lot more young, younger people buying real estate. And that would be the, the biggest regret of mine, actually just not doing more when I could. That's yeah. hundred percent the regret of, of yeah. mine. And so many people sit on the fence for so long, right? But it's, and they have that analysis paralysis. And um, it's, for me, real estate, the best thing to consider is just buying what you can when you can, but not anything, obviously. Do some due diligence and yeah, get into Yeah, the best you can for your money, yeah. yes. Correct. Yep. Get into some staple markets and, and yep. things like that, obviously. But, um, yep. you know, Australia is an absolute beast. We've got continuing pressures coming in here, big demand and supply issues at the moment. 
growing economy, you know, we're favoured by the rest of the world in terms of a place to live, work and play. Yeah. We're only going to have more pressure and more increases on the price in our real estate. So I, like, people can sit and bitch and moan about it or get into some sort of deal somewhere that makes sense. So yeah, that's probably my prevailing message as well to most people that I, I talk to and have this, have this kind of conversation. Just do yeah. what you can when, when you can. Yeah, because yeah, I think we've I... all been guilty of it. Like I know I didn't buy in Sydney when I could have. I was thinking of doing the home, and like my old man is quite conservative. He's just he's a um, accountant background, did very well, and but he was like, "That's a lot of young debt. That's a lot of debt for a young man." And I didn't buy it. And then I be then I became one of those people that was like, "Oh, it's too expensive every year. It's too expensive. It's got to come down. It's got to come down. It's got to come down every single year until it got to the point that it's got to now." um and you know why we might have some blips like the home i've just bought recently has probably dropped about this is a great point to consider i bought this home to live in for at least the next 10 to 15 years mm -hmm. that's my my time frame i've probably lost about two hundred thousand bucks on this home since i've bought it just given yep. what's happened in the city in the last i don't care yeah i don't care because i know that the real estate market goes like this here in this country it, it does. That, that and it's already trajectory. beginning to recover. And it's, it's already doing know. that. So I know yeah. this time next year, I'm probably going to be feeling a bit better about myself and being back to what the property was that I, I paid for it. And then the end of next year, who knows where it's going to be. I might be 5% up as well. So, yeah, you know, it's about sort of time in the market more than riding, rather than timing the market. Is it is true. Well. And as, you know, as someone that has held, um, and I'll use this home as an example, like, you know, we bought it for just under... For Hundy, I was um, so annoyed when I bought it because it was a boom. It was in the boom. I'd sell oh, right. on, yeah. yeah. It's I'd all sell relative, my... isn't it? Which which boom? Ah, uh, that was memory. the end of the ninety. Do you remember the market went oh, off in ninety seven? Yeah. yeah, and yeah. we bought in two thousand. Yeah. And okay. um, I remember we'd landed in Australia from New Zealand and I was looking around at all the houses and we were saving feverishly for a deposit. And I literally arrived in Australia with three t-shirts, one pair of jeans, <laughs> and that was it. That was, that was it. I was negative. 3, I hope you had a jumper for Melbourne. <laughs> I didn't. We were negative $3,000 uh, $3, that I had to put on a credit card for the bond yeah, for an right. apartment. Like we had nothing because we'd just done a big trip overseas. So we just, we, we went stuff it. We're just going to land here and do whatever we can to, to get in a good position. Yeah. And, oh, that's um, awesome. Yeah. It was very funny. We had to save for our first washing machine because I didn't want any yeah. more debt. Um, Cause I was thinking like that about debt. Um, yeah. Yeah. And um, we eventually saved enough for a house, which was this house. And I remember going around to some of the properties in South Yarra and all of that and arguing with agents because they were selling them at that point in time for 300000 and uh, in two fifty, And I was going, it's gone up too much. The market's going to go down. They were like, it's not, mate. You better yeah, get... I was yeah. like... I was having these full-on fisticuffs with these agents going, yeah. market's going to drop. I knew nothing. I was just making that shit up. But I thought <laughs> if it goes up that fast, it must come down again. And yeah, I didn't. Uh, and then I ended up spending, call it 400 because yeah, I yeah. didn't get in fast well, enough. But yeah. now, and I was kicking myself. I was like, I have spent too much on this property. I've overpaid. I, what a What an idiot. And, you know, now probably two and a half million. So it's not a $4 million yeah. property. It's a single fronted, but I've held it since 2000, that time. 2000 2001. Yeah. yeah. And, and, it, and it, it's such a good point because we, we say this all the time. People are like, oh, it's, it's yeah. kind of peaking. And you're like, well, you know, maybe it is. It's well, all now. relative to every individual market. <laughs> but, oh, even when you're having this discussion, people are like, oh, it's yeah. too expensive. You know, this market's too expensive. And you go, oh, well, look, you know, I don't think the guy or girl who bought in the last boom, you know, pre-GFC are upset with themselves. They probably no, were right. during the GFC, but then they pretty quickly were probably, probably pretty bloody happy from 2014 to 2017 before the dip yep. happened again. Yeah. Then it started going up again. <laughs> so yep. we're having a little bit of a dip now, and it's going to go yep. up again now. So yeah, it's it's all a matter of that time, that time in the market. It, yeah. it it really is, and the ability to hold. And you know, maybe you spent two hundred k more to secure that property, but there's so little stock on the market at the moment, Breno. You know that. Yeah. And yeah. you will not be telling yourself 
um, you, well, you will not be regretting it. I know you're not already, but um, yeah. 10 years down the track where that property is doubled and no one can afford to get into that market. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Yeah. And it's, it's an interesting thought, you know, the future yeah. of Australia. And I know Sam talks about it all the time. And yeah. actually sometimes it's, it's quite scary to think about what oh, 20 years will look like in yeah. not only Sydney, but um, all our capitals and, and actually around the world with the bit of displacement going on, um, socioeconomic sort of displacement. Yep. And I don't, you know, obviously, you know, home buying and owning is going to be a thing of sitting with 10% of, of the population in the future because the government's going to have to start putting more property out there just to get people under shelter. And we're already seeing that come through with like, you know, big groups in, with support yeah. from the government doing like build to rent and stuff like that. So yeah. imagine in 10 years time where 50% of the real estate that's being produced is build to rent, you know, there's going to be fewer owner occupier properties out there, which will actually probably conversely increase their, their value for yeah. the, because there'll be lesser demand, um, so much strong, strong demand on them and stuff like that. So it's a crazy thing to think about what the next 10 to 20 years looks like yeah, right. for real estate, not only here, but, but everywhere. Yeah, yeah, but it's definitely scary right now. And like I put stuff on LinkedIn and 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 to our group all the time about some some media articles. But you know, there's no end in sight for the rent rent rises that we've been seeing. Now maybe it'll slow down a little bit. Yeah, government. Right. right. I think definitely. the rate of growth over the next few years, when it does start growing again, is still going to be relatively subdued compared to last few years. But there's no signs for it to slow down. There's no real estate. Like well, my job is to go and list real estate. Any market I can pluck. And I can take a look at how many DAs are in play there. Not many DAs in play. And are they even going to be able to get off the ground? There's, a, there's only a handful of builders in Southeast Queensland right now yeah. that can even do any form of medium to high residential, res, high density residential development apartments. Yeah. And you know what they're doing? They're saying, hey, do you want to, you want to get me to build this? This is my risk at the moment. This is my price. Hey, all of a sudden, that development doesn't stack, so it's getting laid you know, put on the back burner and laying dormant. Ergo, we've got no supply coming through. So, you know, it's a really interesting dynamic at the moment, but all things are pointing to like tighter elements of supply until we get some sort of change in the wind of the market. And yeah, rents and prices, I think, are sitting there to uh, to, mm. to go up pretty quick. Yeah. Um, yeah, so just following that train of thought, I know, you know, some people do want the family home and they do want... Um, you know they don't do want a beautiful place and i and i get that that drive that need to have a space that feels you know um yeah. like it gives back to you it's yeah just just somewhere that's um that's got a fabulous energy to live um i i understand that but i do encourage people if you like you were saying breno if you cannot get the property that is your dream home then do you know make sure you're looking at rent vesting make sure you're looking I mean we never bought this place to be our forever home it was just that we ended up investing everywhere else and then other stuff got in the way and we and our daughter we had our daughter early yeah. um, you know she's um, in her 30s she's left home I don't actually need anything bigger than this. I yeah, hate my neighbours. Exactly. That's a story for an, that's a story for another day. <laughs> the, part, the partying tenants, isn't it? The party. Oh, I've got lovely neighbours this side, terrible neighbours at the back. Yeah, right. Um, okay. The party too much, but um, yeah. you know, all of that aside, it's they're not really big challenges. So, yeah. um, you know, we've been very fortunate. Um, but we've worked for it, and yeah. you know, we've chosen where we put our resources, um, as has Brennan, um, but don't let not being perfect stop you. Um, you know, yeah. make sure you learn. There's forums, there's places like Positive Real Estate. There's, you know, yeah. Brennan, you've got your, um, you've got, um, you know, your LinkedIn where you put lots of information. Do you have other sources where you I know you do videos. Yeah, that's probably that's probably my most active one where I love yeah. to just put some content, you know, anywhere from one to five times a week, just getting some really great content out there and market insights and stuff about deals and successful successful yeah. stories and, and yeah. things like that. So it's a great place to to look. But it's yeah, look, you know, really. even if you're not buying real estate for another year because you're in your saving phase, like that's where joining PRE on one of the, the mentoring structures of, of joining and yeah. You know, at least then you're going to be so well armed when you are ready. You're not starting there 
Yeah. You know, yeah. you're probably better off than the person who walks in and goes, Hey, I've got a hundred grand on deposit ready. Let's go. And it's like, well, you need some education, like coming <laughs> yeah. in, with, coming, in with 10 grand, coming in with 10 grand and joining and then sitting there for six months and listening to everything. You're going to actually, then when you're ready, be like, Hey, look, I've got a yeah, strategy in mind. I've got a market in mind. I know yeah. how contracts work. Yeah, everything in between. Yeah, because yeah. people yeah. forget property buying property is a crazy process, right? <laughs> you know, how many people are involved in a property transaction? It's oh. mind numbing. Yeah, sometimes I think we worked out 100 and, 130 you know, you, or you something. You punch the wall sometimes with it. I tell you, I always remember I used to joke and say, "Geez, I miss working in a bottle shop because someone would come in, take the beer, and disappear." It was the <laughs> one hit transaction. That was it. You'd never see them again. But property, obviously, you got multiple solicitors. There's, defects period uh, accountants uh, involved expensive. brokers involved and, and yeah. stuff like that but yeah yeah i think um and a lot of people i think they don't want to do their investment property because they think i'll be saving for a home and that's a big pitfall because actually well, well hang on you've got 50 grand you need 200 to buy your home like that it's going to take you seven years to save that 200 don't you think putting that 50 into an investment is going to better your chances of getting to 200 faster. You're going to get depreciation from that property. You're going to get a capital growth from that property. You know, if not year one, come year two or three with the type of properties we work on, you're probably going to be sitting in positive cash flow territory even as as well. So a lot of people think, oh, no, I'll spend my money. It's spent. Well, it's actually not. You're putting it into an accruing asset to, to better your chances of a faster deposit saving process so you know real estate can be two things saving money to buy that home or it can be you know um uh, something to just be a stepping stone to have on to to all the way to retirement so it depends yeah. how you want to play it yeah. yeah don't start me on saving for stamp duty if you're buying a two three million dollar home oh yeah you've that's got expensive. some uh you got well, some uh big stamp a, duty bills yeah hit. i know i know um <laughs> and that's an interesting one too like imagine what's going to happen to the market you know, the government needs to fuel people buying real estate. And a huge, a huge problem with that is actually, you know, someone having to fork out 150 grand to buy a $3 million home, which maybe in 10 years, $3 million homes is going to be the norm. Who knows? Yeah. Um, yep. So how long until maybe that becomes everywhere across the board, uh, states adapting, you know, a, a thousand bucks, 2000 bucks, 3000 bucks a year kind of thing. Yeah, and then the yeah, market rather. becomes a lot more open more pressure more people mm -hmm. able to get into the into the field and play too yeah, so well, there might be in the next little help. while i, I think mm. in the next two to five years there could be some real big changes in our country coming in terms of policy state and federal based um grant orientated or yep. you know offsets for stamp duties and, and a lot of changes in the real estate industry mm. um because obviously you know it it, it amount property and related services is north of 60 percent of our, our gdp and, you know what it what it is and, and isn't so they have to do something to always make sure it's getting fueled and, and underway yep. yeah yeah interesting and just one final anecdote from myself um before yeah. i ask um brennan if he's got anything else he wanted to add um you know i have had clients um one couple in particular that built a portfolio now they joined when they were a bit younger they were their mid-20s um, they bought, I think it was about five or six properties and they held those for a good 11 years and they did choose to sell that portfolio down. Now there were capital gains tax implications with that. They had to work with their accountant to make sure that, um, you know, they minimized that as much as they could by selling over a couple of years and all of that mm. kind of stuff, but they had a plan, um, because their intention was always to get some capital growth, to be able to add value to those properties to enable them to buy their dream home um, uh, cash um, in cash. And they yeah, succeeded uh, in doing that. They ended up buying yeah, regionally um, by choice, um, yeah. but they did buy, you know, they spent well over a million dollars on a, um, on a beautiful home um, out regional and they did awesome. it all with cash. So, you know, and that, now yeah, they have to go. start their investment journey again, um, but they're yeah. young enough to do another cycle um, and yeah, an okay. investment portfolio, but now they don't have a mortgage uh, on their home and um, and that worked really well. So there's not. so many different ways to use property to create options for yourself. So don't yeah. ever think that you're out of the market and you don't have options. I've had single mums that, um, you know, have thought that there were no options for them. Um, I've had people move home with their parents to save. 
uh, you know, you name it, um, and uh, and just get into the market. And it really yeah, is about totally. you know, getting that first step. I, I've got property professional mates who are mid forties, don't own a home. They own six, seven investment properties, um, and That's their right. interest is maybe getting something down the track. So yeah, you never. Like, there's so many ways, so many ways to go about yeah. it. Definitely. Yeah. Well, especially if you're going to be nomadic, right? Why do you want to? Yeah, uh, exactly. <laughs> you're only going to rent it. <laughs> awesome. And so, Brennan, um, uh, that famous question that we always ask at the end of every podcast, oh, if you could go back in time and speak to young Brennan, knowing what you know today, what would you say to Brennan to, I don't know, change um, the trajectory? I've, I've kind of said it, it's been a bit of a theme of mine throughout this really, but it was um, just just by, by what what's possible when, when you can. Um, yeah. You know, if you've got your heart set on one market, but it's unachievable, explore another and get yeah. something rather than spend another five years umming and ahhing and sitting on the fence about it. Because the market, right? Totally. And yeah. the market that we have at the moment now is ever-increasing information and the speed of changes compared to previous market changes yeah. is so much. Our falls are sharper and faster, last a lesser amount of time. The rises are sharper and faster. and The yeah. changes to market are, are you know, so it's it's... Yeah. It's just a game of doing what you can when you can, really. Definitely, yeah. definitely. Um, yeah, and look, I've got mates who, yeah, done really well. I'm always bullied as the spruker guy, you know, <laughs> the property spruker. Um, and um, I always say to them, I'm, I'm like, listen here, mate. You know, at the end of the day, if you just bought one of my deals, any one of my deals that me and my guys have been working on five yeah. years ago, you'd be up to half a million dollars up. So, you know. You should have done something. You should have done I'd something. I buy your deals, yeah. Brennan. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, we do, and we do. We um for positive real estate are cooks that eat their own cooking or chefs that eat yeah, their exactly. own cooking. Um we are exactly. we are big fans of um our team. Um all yeah. buying or buying positive real estate deals as well. So yeah, hundred um, percent. We do take our medicine. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, well, that's what, you know, I did the gunner deals. I was doing deals there at the time. People would have still done well and had some great cash flow. They didn't have the bad soil like I did, which is good. Um, <laughs> awesome. And obviously people who bought in Newcastle had a great time since we've been doing that, yeah. doing that as well. I think I did those deals with the same builders we we, we I work with, some of them still work with today as well. So, oh, yeah, amazing. practice what you preach, definitely. Oh, fantastic. Well, thank you, uh, my friend, for no your time problem. today. Uh, much appreciated. Awesome. <laughs> it was good to come along. Good for a chin wag. I learned some stuff about you. I hope you learned some stuff about me. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I hope you it wasn't too less. much too much of a, a absolute earful of bit of market jibber jabber. Hey. But uh, I could speak for hours and hours on this kind of stuff, and that's just what happens when that's you're good. part of our team. I think it's oh, you're pa we're passionate constant. about real estate, aren't we? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, but thank you so much for having me. Oh, thank you, Brennan. Awesome. All right. Bye for now. See you, Dad. Speak to you soon. Hey, thanks for listening to Property Investor Tales. Remember to subscribe so you get notified every time a new episode drops. As you can guess, I love hearing people's property investor tales. So if you'd like to share yours, then please get in touch with me via email at propertyinvestortales at positivementor.com.au. We would also love your feedback and I would appreciate a five-star review over on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Remember, you can watch all of these podcasts over on YouTube at Positive Mentor or at positivementor.com.au. Until then, take care, happy investing, and bye for now.